Hey guys, one thing I wanted to share real quick, I had mentioned the uh, bypass capacitor that makes up the filter for the diode. And uh, I had two clues. First of all, I had a small stub sticking up off of the uh, pin of the tube itself, which made me believe that uh, something had been there before that uh, was cut out. And that was indeed the case. And uh, you can see I've still got the uh, tacked in capacitor, in my case, 250 picofarads. The schematic that you'll see here calls out 220. It's common to find somewhere around 150 to uh, 250 picofarad used. And the purpose, again, for the capacitor is to uh, mitigate or take the 455 kilohertz IF frequency in this particular receiver to ground. Let me show you the scope. You can see the white lead I've got attached. That's uh, hooked up to my scope in series with a uh, capacitor. And you can look at the uh, 455 kilohertz sine wave. And then I'll reattach the capacitor and uh, you'll see the difference that it makes. Okay, you can see the scope, and again, I'm going through a, a bypass cap off of the high side of the volume control, and uh, this is the uh, IF frequency passing through on the audio side. So again, this particular uh, capacitor is uh, called out C13, will mitigate or take the IF frequency to ground. Let me attach it back and I'll show you the difference here on the scope. Now I have the capacitor hooked up and we're shunting the IF frequency to ground. And you can see the amplitude now of the IF signal on the audio side. Again, this works by leveraging capacitive reactants. A smaller capacitor of probably 150 picofarads will provide more resistance to ground. I did the math, and with my 250 picofarad capacitor in place, approximately 18 dB of rejection of the 455 kilohertz RF signal, is being uh, rejected from the uh, audio stream. So I wanted to share that, just something to uh, look for. Again, with the capacitor not being there as well, the sensitivity of the receiver is also uh, somewhat compromised. Thanks for watching.